why I'm wearing a jacket today uh, is in the low 50s in Florida. <laughs> so for us, this is really cold. So we crack out all the jackets. Uh, when the temperature gets to, to anywhere below 70, we start pulling out the, the coats and all that. So welcome to Florida. Hello folks, so um, here's another update. Uh, it's been a couple of days. Uh, we let the, the water tight dry. So if you remember, this is the, the section that we sanded prior to uh, applying the product. And this section we didn't sand at all. And then we have a section um, towards the bow where we applied an epoxy um, mixed with a filler. And um, we sanded that area too before we apply the product. So I'm gonna um, sand it right now and uh, see how it comes out from touching it. Um, it definitely filled the voids. It's actually, um, I don't feel hardly any, any bumps um, in it. Uh, I have a little bit more bumps on the one that I didn't sand it priorly, uh, previously, sorry. So I, I think I may, you know, based on just the touching of how these two came out, uh, we'll see what happens after I sand it. Uh, I'm probably gonna sand the whole bottom at least once just to smooth the surface out before I apply the uh, watertight uh, epoxy compound. And we'll see uh, in a couple minutes how it looks on the, um, over on the epoxy side of the house. So let me get suited up and get grinding. All right, so definitely the one that we pre-sanded feels better. Um, there's still a little bit of a, of a bump here and there, but for the most part, it feels pretty consistent. Um, the side that we did not sand beforehand, that was just uh, playing with the sandblasting uh, when we did that job. Um, It's not too bad, but it feels more bumpy, so I probably would take another coat. So I'm thinking that it's if I sand it, um, I can probably do the filling with only one pass uh, and then only retouch afterwards versus this is probably going to need a second pass to really fill out, finish filling up the voids. So let's go take a look at the uh, resting side and see how that came out. So this section you see here, this little bit of the kind of yellowish in color. This is the epoxy uh, mixed up with a filler. And um, we put it on and it feels pretty good. It feels a little coarser um, than the watertight, which is what you see there. This turns kind of purplish after, um, after you, it dries out, but it comes out like bluish in color. So I'm gonna hit this with a sander and uh, let's see how it comes out. Well, um, not bad at all. It filled uh, a lot of the holes um, pretty solidly. Uh, still gonna need a little bit more sanding. I'm just trying to sand now for, for a test to, to see how it works. And um, it actually came out pretty good. Um, but between this and the watertight, um, really not much difference. Uh, some people have told me that if I use the, you know, the watertight is actually epoxy filler that's already pre-mixed, it's like kind of prepared for for quick application, um, using uh, straight resin and then adding a filler, uh, you know, some people say it's more structural, but I mean, for the size of holes that we're filling up here, uh, honestly, I don't think it's gonna make a big difference. Um, 
and for the repair what I'm trying to do is get to a level where I have a solid um, smooth surface so when we put several coats of barrier coat that's really what's going to kind of keep it all together and prevent moisture from getting to the hull. Um, so I think that a uh, successful experiment and um, you know I'll add a couple of pictures uh, to this video of the material that I used um, and basically uh, if you want to try it on your own uh, best of luck to you. Uh, I'm trying to do this in a way that is cost effective for me and also from a time standpoint that I can get it done quickly. Um, peeling uh, you know at this stage of the game is not an option and it would take too long and it would cost too much uh, to get it done that way um, I think for the for what I'm trying to do which is you know there's a lot of no, it's non-structural anything that I'm fixing here is really I just want to make sure I have a good bond and a, and a smooth surface so when I put the barrier coat it's going to be an epoxy based barrier coat so that's really going to bring it um, all together so I think what I'm going to be doing next is sanding the entire hull, um, cleaning it up, and, uh, and then applying the uh, watertight uh, epoxy uh, pretty much throughout and whatever, you know, it still feels a, a little bump, then I'll retouch it on that particular spot. Um, and then we'll be uh, ready for uh, bottom paint. So that's it for now. Uh, hope you're enjoying the adventures on Refit Land here on Saline Vessel Reverie, uh, 1985 Pearson uh, centerboard, 34 feet. And um, if you have any questions or comments, I appreciate any feedback, please feel free to put it on the comments uh, below in the video or on the Facebook post. So thank you so much. Uh, catch you guys later.